We are live. How are we doing, everyone? Now, before I start, I am just going to make sure that we are coming up live in all of our different locations. We're actually live streaming onto multiple channels on Facebook as well as on YouTube as well. So we are going in there. And I'm just going to be doing a little share of... Uh, of this particular live because I want this to go into a couple of other groups that we're in as well. And what we're gonna to do today is we're actually going to talk about how to stand out as an expert online. Um, so one of the ways that I'm doing that right now, if my internet keeps up with me, is to share this live. So if you are here, uh, and you are watching this, if you could also press the share button, that would be wonderful. Um, and at the moment, my internet is well and truly frozen on me, so I'm just gonna give it a moment to catch up. And then we're gonna crack into some training today. Um, so I've prepared a presentation for you, and in this presentation, we're gonna go through the 12 tips to helping yourself stand out as an expert online. Now, I'm just refreshing my internet right now because it is coughing and spluttering under the demand. <laughs> um, and I'm just making sure that we are nice and smooth. I'm just gonna turn my phone on here as well to make sure that we are definitely streaming at a half decent rate. No sound. I'm just refreshing my internet. It's right working. Now. Okay, cool. So I was just checking my phone to make sure it's coming up properly here. Okie dokie. Now, my internet is totally coughing and spluttering at me, so um, I'm going to hope that we stay on. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, everyone else that's with us. And uh, get cracking with sharing my screen. So I'm also going to be recording this for my podcast, so I'm going to just make sure we've got good enough sound coming through here. So hello, I'm Sarah Cordina, and today we are going to be going through 12 tips to help you stand out as an expert online. Now, as you know, I specialize in helping people create their own online courses and in becoming an educator, a thought leader, and becoming a standout industry leader in their field of expertise. So one of the things that happens is people say to me, do I need to feel my, build my audience first before I create an online course or an educational product or program um, so that I have someone to launch to? Or do I create the course and then build the audience? Now, the answer is you need to be doing both all at the same time. Now this can feel really scary when you first go out into the online world. You know, you're already having to learn a million new things and on top of that, then deal with the imposter syndrome and that absolute gut-wrenching fear of putting yourself on camera and going out into the big wide world. With all scared of different things, whether it's what people think of us, whether we're going to be criticized, whether we know enough, whether we're going to sound like an idiot, whether we are even going to be able to help anyone after going to all the effort that we go to. There are so many things that put people off sharing their knowledge and their expertise with the world. There are so many things that put people off looking back at their life experiences, the challenges they've got through or the successes that they've had. And and, and like putting it out there, just sharing it with the world. You know, we have been through so much stuff that would be really, really amazing for us to help other people get through. But we have to, if we want to make a difference to other people's lives, we have to put ourselves out there as an expert. We have to share what we know. If we don't, we can't be seen, we can't be heard, we can't help, we can't serve, and we certainly won't make any money. Now, I'm gonna share my screen with you for those of you who are watching the video, for those of you who are listening to the recording of this, and uh, you are um, listening to the podcast episode, there is a video recording that will come with this. So for those of you who are on the screen, let me just share this presentation slide with you and we are gonna go up and present. Now, let me check, we've got that sharing up on our screen. No, we're not. And uh, you are um, listening to the podcast episode. There is a video there we recording go. that will come with this. Lovely, so lovely, lovely. All right, so here we are. We are now officially um, going through the 12 ways to stand out as an expert online. Now, some of you know my story, some of you don't, um, but one part of my very big story is that in early 2012, I rocked up in Australia with nothing more than a suitcase full of bikinis, 
in winter <laughs> and nothing more than a whole load of hope. I had no idea where I was going to live. I didn't know anyone who lived here. I had no money. I had no mobile phone. I had absolutely nothing at all. My husband was working away at sea and maritime security at the time. And so I came out here completely alone and had no idea what I was going to do. I had been running my own education business prior to that in the in Europe, in the UK and in the Mediterranean in Malta. Um, but I didn't want to sell my business. I didn't want to sort of cut it all off. I intended to kind of bring it with me and restart it all over in Australia. But when you have nothing to begin with, <laughs> because I didn't sell it or anything like that, it was really, really hard. I was starting from zero, like most people are, most people who have a dream to go out and start their own businesses. I literally had nothing to begin with at all and within 18 months of rocking up in Australia that first day I arrived I walked out of the airport the hot air hit me I was holding my suitcase and I just stood there and stared out of the car park and thought what am I going to do <laughs> 18 months on from that day I had built a seven-figure business and had 23 full-time employees working for me in my offices in Australia and I did that using a number of techniques, but the biggest one was getting myself online. Now, when you don't have massive marketing budgets, when you don't have big marketing teams, which I didn't have any of that when I first began, I knew that I had to find ways that were had the biggest impact possible, that had the biggest reach possible, that made the biggest ripple effect and share effect possible without me having to spend any money so that I could be seen, so that I could be heard, so that I could be found and so that I could be booked. And so what I did is I used a, a whole bunch of strategies and I'm only gonna share some of the online ones today. There was also a lot of in-person type strategies that I used, but online is where we are right now. So there's no point in me sharing uh, in-person strategies with you right now because most of us listening to this at this time it's COVID lockdown time at the time of recording this so I'm going to share with you some of the strategies I used online in order to get myself out there now the first page I have on my presentation screen right now is how to be prolific and omnipresent now these are my kind of this is my word this is my statement for when I'm trying to grow something it's about prolific omnipresence. Now, like I've just said, if people can't see you, if they can't hear you, you simply do not exist to them. You have to be omnipresent. You have to be prolific. You have to put yourself out there. And it's scary as doing it, but we have to. Now, here's the definition, prolific. It means being present in large quantities. It means plentiful, copious, bountiful, and abundant. Being prolific is all about being there all of the time. Now, omnipresent, similar meaning, widely or constantly encountered, widespread, universal, or worldwide. So it's all about making sure that we are constantly being seen by the people who we are trying to serve, constantly being seen by our target audience. And that doesn't mean hoping they accidentally find us, hoping that they go to the lengths of finding our website, scrolling through all the different options and reaching out to us and asking us what we have to offer the world. We have to make it really, really easy for people to find us and we have to put ourselves in front of them. Now, I help people create their own online courses. And um, once every few months, I run my 30 day coaching program, people come in, they complete their online course, set up their online school and publish those courses within 30 days. And each month, I then go to do a mail out to my list to show everyone all of the courses that everyone created in the last month's program. And it, it amazes me, no matter how much I tell people, this is what you need to do, here's where you need to post it, you know, you've created your course, now go and put it here, now post it here, list it in this place, do these simple things so that people can find it, buy it. How many of them don't do that <laughs> they just don't do it it's like this fear comes along they create this amazing product and now they're too scared to put it out there if you are going to make a difference in the world you have to be able to get comfortable with fear you are never going to completely eliminate fear you're never going to be able to eliminate that sense of will people like me or not like me am i going to get trolled you know um, um, am i going to get criticized you're never going to eliminate it eliminate that completely so you've got to just simply learn to live with it you've just got to learn how to take a deep breath and go out there and shine and give and help and serve 
anyway, regardless, despite those uncomfortable feelings being there. That is the difference between successful people and the people that haven't got what they want yet. It's not because one has magical skills, a magical gift that nobody else has been given before. We are all born the same naked little bundles of flesh, okay? The difference is, is the ones who are successful have taken that deep breath and have just gone out despite their concerns, their worries, and their feelings, okay? So that's all you need to do, first of all. So we must think, how can we be prolific and omnipresent all of the time? And that is the number one thing I kept in my mind and kept in my head when I made that first step of going out to the world to try and get seen, get heard, get noticed, and show my expertise to my market to demonstrate to people that I had the skills that I had. And so that people then say to me, Sarah, okay, so we're going to go out there, we're going to be in front of people, in their faces, show up constantly all of the time. Aren't I going to be completely annoying? I mean, am I just going to get hit with that block button? <laughs> so first of all, if somebody unfriends you, they weren't your friend. All you are doing is doing and serving and giving your gift in your way. You have been given a gift. You have a purpose. You found your passion. You found your thing you want to do and the thing you want to help people with. And if you have people coming to you and saying to you, I don't support that. You're annoying for doing your thing. You're annoying for living your passion and your purpose. Well, they're not your friend anyway. So see y'all. Um, <laughs> but also there is a way to be annoying. And that is if you're constantly trying to sell at people. This is the buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff kind of annoying. Now, if you are constantly putting yourself in front of people in that capacity, then yes, you are being annoying. So the number one thing, again, I did when I was going, right, I need to be prolific, I need to be omnipresent. If I'm going to be found in this brand new country where nobody knows who I am, I have to be seen, I have to be found, or I'm not going to get any business, and I'm going to starve to death and die, right? <laughs> so I thought, well, how can I do this without being annoying? Well, when you're helping people, you're not annoying. Now, there is you, you, someone saving your life. You've just been in, a, God forbid, a terrible accident. Somebody saving your life. You're hardly going to be going, oh, you're so annoying for helping me. So we need to start thinking less of an entrepreneur in terms of selling, selling, selling. We need to go from selling to sharing. We need to go from shouting to giving. We need to start educating our market. The more you think like an educator, the more helpful you're being, the more people want to follow you, the more people will log in when you go live, the more people will read your stuff when you write it and publish it and share it. We, when we educate, instead of promise people that we know what we know, we actually show them what we know. They get to literally experience for themselves that we really are the expert that we say we are. And when they have experienced for themselves that we know what we know, we can do what we can can do we don't ever have to sell again we never have to sell at people and therefore the whole annoying thing is gone it's a bit like when you go to the deli counter in the supermarket and you get to taste the bit of cheese before you buy it and it's something about you know having a little taste and a little nibble mm, oh yes it's definitely cheese we end up buying a whole block of it right we just go can I have a block of that oh and while I'm here I'll pick that that and that too and this is what happens when we educate. When we go out to the world, we give, we share, we give people quick results. When people can see and experience who we are, that we have integrity, that we are just here to serve, then, then they go on and buy. And this is why up on the screen, I've got the word strategically. Because if we just only give stuff away for free, eventually, you know, <laughs> well, what, how are we gonna pay the bills? Giving stuff away for free doesn't pay the bills. However, giving stuff away for free leads people to develop a sense of trust and familiarity with you. And then you can open up your other product services and programs that you might have. So when I say strategically, this is where I want you to think more like an edupreneur. It's educating your market profitably. Now, hopefully we've got, I've got a whole different presentation on planning your business model, but hopefully you are thinking about what is your free stuff? What are your free giveaways that show people that you know what you know, that gives them a tangible result, that makes them feel like they had their time and their, themselves and their human dignity and respect valued by you, um, that you can then say, right, well, if you like that bit, you've got tips from that. Here's the next step where the transformation changes to this next level. Hopefully you've then got a mid price option, perhaps an online course and then higher priced options such as done with you coaching 
done for you services. So moving on from this, now we need, we need to be prolific, we need to be omnipresent, and we need to do it in an educational way if it's going to have the maximum returns for us. As soon as we educate and teach, we are seen as the expert in our thing. As soon as we are standing on a stage, albeit an online one, we do lift ourselves above the crowd and are seen with credibility if we are educating properly. So how do we do this online? Well, content marketing, guys, is one of the best ways that we can do this, especially without a budget. So I'm talking, when we talk about content marketing, we're talking about creating videos, publishing pre-recorded videos on YouTube, on social media channels. We're talking going live. Going live has the biggest reach. Now, yes, it's the most scary because you don't know what tech issues are going to go wrong, especially when you're on your own, you don't have an assistant checking to make sure everything's going right. You need to um, realize, however, that going live is going to get you the most reach. Going live gets you the most amount of impact and replay ability up on those social media channels. So you've got to be brave and go live. Now, if it's really terrifying for you to just do it publicly like this, start off in a small Facebook group. Just start off, create your own little group, invite people that are familiar with you in there that you feel comfortable around and practice, practice, practice because nobody falls out of the womb being a good presenter on camera. It is not a natural human thing. It is a skill that has to be learned and it can only be learned by doing it. And I'm afraid there's gonna be a day when you do your first one and you probably will forget your own name. <laughs> you don't know how to put a sentence together, let alone present eloquently and articulately or with any kind of sense to it. But we all start somewhere. Everyone who presents well on camera has mucked up lots and lots of times and just braved, braved, braved it, doing it again, doing it again, doing it again until it works. Content marketing, so being prolific, being omnipresent and educating is also about blogging, creating articles. What questions are your audience asking? What things do people type into Google? So think of your area of expertise. What are they going, hi Google, how to something? What are they writing in to find out things about your topic? That's all you need to blog about. That's all you need to do videos on. That's all you need to do live streams on is what you think they are typing in how to into Google. Now, it can be going on podcasts or creating your own podcast. Um, Facebook groups, perhaps you can create your own Facebook group and start attracting an audience of people to your group so that, again, you can just start getting close to them. It's going to work for you for marketing later, but also being in other people's. Not everyone wants to own a Facebook group, but going into other people's Facebook groups and answering questions, being helpful, not trying to sell, educating, sharing, giving tips to the questions that people are asking in those Facebook groups. And again, either delivering webinars, hosting webinars of your own, or being a guest on other people's. So these are just a couple of ideas right here. And what I'm going to do now is go into 12 steps that I follow to make myself be as prolific and omnipresent as I possibly can online so that I can share my expertise with the biggest market possible and in a way that makes the system of doing that as easy for me as possible. So that's what we're going to share now. Now, before we do that, I am just going to go in over to the stream and check if we've got any questions and comments coming up. We're all good by the looks of it. Any questions? No, it looks like we're all good. All righty. Okay, so let's carry on with this presentation. now. Talking about being prolific and having omnipresence, I like to think of all these things we need to create, all these times we turn up, all the times we show up, every little piece of omnipresence and prolificness, I don't know if that's a word, but it's gonna be right now, prolificness, <laughs> is a bit like building a spider's web. Now I like to think, you know, if you were gonna go out fishing, any fishing fanatics who are listening or watching today, and you throw a net out into the sea, you know, your chances of catching fish are often gonna be relative to the size of the net that you're throwing out into the ocean. The bigger the net you've got, the more chance of fish you're going to catch. The bigger the net is, the more chance the fish are going to be bigger, okay? So this is a little analogy, a metaphor that I like to use when it comes to kind of getting your head around this, okay, I need to go out to the world, I need to create content, I need to put my thoughts and my ideas and my techniques and my strategies out to the world. So every time you do a video on YouTube, 
it's a little ring around the spider's web or it's a little ring on the fishing net. Every time you do a Facebook Live, it's another ring. Every time you publish a blog post, it's another ring. Every time you turn up on a podcast, it's another ring. Every time you go on a summit or present on a webinar, it's another ring, another ring, another ring. Now, what happens with content marketing is over time, it grows, it grows, it grows. And every single piece that you put out there is searchable by Google and in YouTube. So when somebody goes online and goes how to something in your topic and it's your stuff that now has a chance of coming up in their search results if your stuff is coming up in their search results a you're seen as an expert because you have content in that stuff now you can be seen now you can be heard now you can be found guess what now you can be bought from as well now that follower can become your follower that searcher can become part of your community part of your database and hopefully a contributor to your bank account so this is so important I have pieces of content that I created years ago, years ago, that to this day are still making me money. They are still making me found on Google, that I'm still coming up in people's YouTube search results for, that are still now leading people into my business and into my books. And this is why I find the return on investment of using these strategies absolutely massive. One blog post can earn you thousands and thousands of dollars over a period of time, provided that you've used that blog post strategically to obviously move people through your business without it being a sales pitch. That's all going back to being educational, being helpful, gets the maximum shares, it gets maximum search results, and it also gets maximum conversions if you offer something appropriate after you've provided that educational value. And so I like to start this whole entire process with videos because videos is the most highest converting type of content that you can do right now. Humans like humans, humans love to look into the eyes of the person that's teaching and instructing and guiding them. It is the most highest human connection that we can do aside from sitting literally front in front of each other face to face. And so videos, I like to start off with a live stream like I'm doing right now, I'm recording this um, on, on live at this very moment in time. Now you go live, it has the maximum reach when you go live. Facebook at the moment is trying to encourage live streaming and so it is giving lots of reach and exposure to those people who do it, rewards. Now, after you've done the live stream, you can download your live streams. A lot of people don't know this. Now, when your video is finished, you click on the top right-hand side of your video, there's three little dots and you can download your own video. So you download your live stream video, you save it, and you press upload to YouTube, you upload it to your social media channels. Now straight away, that's multiple pieces of content. You've uploaded it directly into, into your social media channels. You directly upload it into YouTube. Now all of a sudden, it's straight away that content is now searchable forever. How good is that? So I always say to people, go live first, download the MP4 recording and repost the recordings. Step one. Step number two is to then get the video transcribed. So transcribing the video means getting the actual words <laughs> in text format that you said in the video. So there's a number of different transcribing tools and pieces of software out there that you can use. Um, I use Rev, rev.com. It's about a dollar a minute um, in terms of charges, but basically you do it straight from your YouTube channel. So you've uploaded your video to YouTube, Rev and YouTube are connected to each other. You press transcribe, you pay your dollar a minute and it jumps out at you um, a, a perfect, pretty much perfect text transcription of your video. Now it also provides you with the subtitles that then go back onto your video. So now your video has subtitles, awesome. And uh, now you've got the text format of your video. So you now have a new piece of content. What do I do with that? Well, I take that transcription, I give it a little edit, and number three is I turn that transcription into a blog post. Simple as that. So now from a simple video I did, I've got multiple videos everywhere. I now have subtitles on those videos. And step number three, I've got the transcript and turn that transcript into a blog post. Now, the second you press publish on a blog post, Again, you now have something else that has search optimization. You have something that can be found in people's Google search results. You have something else that can be shared. Now, people say, but isn't this just, it's the same content. It's the same content as the video. You know, surely if I share this now on social media, people are gonna be like, oh, didn't you do a video on that last week? Well, 
people consume content in different ways. Some people like to watch, some people like to listen, some people like to read, some people are attracted to content that is presented in different ways. I don't know how many of you guys have bought a book before and then gone and bought the audio book. <laughs> so you've paid twice for the exact same thing. You know, I don't know how many of you have watched um, a celebrity chef prepare a meal on the television. And then you went out and bought the cookbook, even though it's exactly the same thing that you've already seen already. We all love to consume content in different ways. And sometimes we like to consume the same content in different ways. So please don't think you are overproducing here. This is about being prolific. It's about being omnipresent. It's about educating your market in a manner that makes you seem helpful and absolutely shown as the expert in your field. Now, it is very easy to create blog posts. I use a platform called WordPress. You can get a version of WordPress that's free to blog from and make sure every single time you're publishing this content that it has a purpose to lead back to you. Can you share a website? Can you share an online course? Can you share a book? Can you share something where they can get more? Perhaps it, you want people to contact you, perhaps you want them to download something. The, you have to be sharing this content in a way that is ultimately going to encourage people to come to you for more. But at the moment, the purpose of becoming the expert is about having all this content out there that shows that we do have expertise and that we do have knowledge. So step number four is I then take that blog post and I quite simply copy it, paste it and share it to my email list. Now, those of you who don't have an email list yet, you're doing what we are doing right now, becoming prolific and omnipresent, sharing our expertise and our education online is exactly how we grow one. So provided you have an email marketing software, now there's loads out there, MailChimp, MailerLite, ConvertKit, um, Active Campaign is the one that I use. This is what enables you to start collecting a list of people. Now, when you've got a list of people in your email list, that is who you sell to. I mean, this is an asset. That is your ultimately your bank account. I don't mean to word people on email lists as if they are bank payers, <laughs> um, but they that that is the community of people who obviously like your stuff and are going to be more inclined to buy from you down the line. So it's really important that you start today in growing your email list. And the best way to do that is with content. Now, when they're on that email list, don't just sell to them. OK, so you need to be giving them educational, helpful, informative content, because that's what maintains your status as an expert. So that's why we then share the content to the email list. Now, by the way, one of the things that I really like to do with my email list is also provide them with a summary of stuff that I've created each month. So perhaps that month I've been on some, done a bunch of YouTube videos, I might have done some podcast recordings, I might have done some live streams up on Facebook. And what I love to do is just at the end of each month say, here's a bunch of training that I've done this month. It's all free. Here's the links to it. And just give out the links so that people can go and find that stuff for free. So that's another really great way to use this sharing, this educational approach to business to, again, establish that credibility as an expert and show people that you know what you know. So tip number five is to then go through that blog post that you've created from the transcript of the video <laughs> and then extract snippets of text to use as social media posts. So perhaps in that blog post, you've kind of got some nice little one liners or a couple of sentences or maybe even a little paragraph that's kind of really nice and consumable to use as a social media post. Now, again, people love to consume content in different ways. I might be looking at your social media channel and not open a link to a blog article. However, I'm going to be very likely to just read the text that you've put on your social media post because it's right there. Like, I don't have to do anything. If I'm thumb scrolling, there it is. There's your post. Um, so what you could do is put, and this is an extract from, and then you can put, either put the link back to your video or to the blog post or just leave it as it is and get some social media engagement. So that's one thing I really like to do is to take those little snippets and load them up into my social media. Now, you can go straight onto Facebook and you can schedule posts from Facebook. I like to use a free, uh, free well, there is a free version, but I like to use a social media auto posting tool called Buffer. Buffer.com, B U F F E R. Now, Buffer is a tool that allows you to load up, preload up a load of social media posts. You can add videos, you can add uh, images, you can add simple text, you can decide and tell it what days of the week you want the, your social media posts to go out, what times of the day you want your social media posts to go out, and it will automatically post that content for you 
on the channels that you choose at the days and the times that you've chosen as well. So I will just do this in one big bulk load. I'll write the blog post, grab some snippets, copy and paste it into Buffer, and boom, all that stuff goes in the queue. Now, what I also add are the original videos, the live stream recording, the YouTube video, um, and the blog posts as well. These all go into my Buffer and uh, then go out and auto post. So tip number six, we then want to create infographics and images. Now remember, people learn in different ways. People's eyes and attention is captured in different ways. So the next one we wanna tackle is that visual learner. So I like to again, go back to some of these blog posts, those blog posts, take some little tips, just one liner tips and create pretty little social media image cards that are then share out on social media. So I like to use a tool called Canva to do this, C-A-N-V-A, -A. Canva has a free account. It's really, really easy. There's loads of social media templates that you can use in there to create these pretty little tip cards. Now, I like them to be a little bit more than just motivational. I really like my tip cards to literally be a tip. So mine say, along the top, they'll normally say something like course creation tip, and then there's one sentence in the middle where it's got the tip, and then at the bottom, I'll put sarahcordner.com. So put your URL on that tip card so that if people do share it, everyone knows who the original poster or creator of that was, and everyone knows who to go and look for if they want more expertise like that. Tip number seven. So again, we're talking about different learning styles, different ways to get in front of people, different ways to be omnipresent. People like to listen. This is a great way to get more people, to get in front of more people. People love listening to podcasts. So why not um, get yourself audio, get some podcasts created, get the MP3s out there. Perhaps you've got an online course platform that you use. You can just put the audio files up into that online course platform. So basically all you do is you go to your original video that you created and you can use simple software. In fact, you can even do this on free, free websites um, on Google. Just go to convert MP4 to MP3. MP4 is a video file, MP3 is an audio file. So just literally Google, convert an MP4 to MP3. And these online platforms, completely free of charge, will take your video and give you just the MP3 audio file. Now, it is really, really simple to set up a podcast. I will leave this that education to the podcast professionals, but um, you can use various tools like libsyn.com or podcast.co. And these platforms, you can upload the MP3 file, create yourself a nice, pretty podcast cover, press distribute, and it will send these podcasts out to Spotify, to iTunes, and so on. So it is a lot easier today than it used to be, and it's a lot easier than people think, and it's yet another way to be found, to be searchable, to be consumed, to educate, impact, and help people, and of course, ultimately, get yourself seen as an expert. Okay, so number eight, tip number eight is to take that original blog post that you created from the transcript from your video and then go into LinkedIn and publish it as a native article inside LinkedIn. LinkedIn also is searchable. It has a massive ecosystem of its own and it's yet another way to be basically published and to be searchable inside a particular ecosystem. So you simply go into LinkedIn, click on home, go to write an article. So it's not a post, it's an article. And you quite simply publish your blog post article in there instead. And LinkedIn is one of the fastest growing social media platforms at the moment, perhaps besides TikTok. <laughs> um, and it, it is it's really been growing for a very, very long time. It has very big reach when you have native articles inside Inside the system um, over sharing links and that's why it's a really good idea to um, create them inside because then within LinkedIn that article gets more views. Um, LinkedIn want people to use their platform more so they're rewarding people that natively publish. So number nine is you've now got yourself this article, this blog post that you created. Well, you might only have a really limited audience. Perhaps you've only got a small e email list. Perhaps you have no email list. Perhaps you've only got a small social media following. One of the things we want to be doing to become prolific and become omnipresent so that we can be seen as the expert in the field is to get in front of as many people as possible. Now, what that can mean is simply borrowing other people's audiences. So we can contact other bloggers 
who have already built huge audiences, who have a whole readership and following who are our target audience and produce content for them. Now, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of bloggers who accept guest posts, i.e. they will accept your blog article and they will post your blog article on their site and share it with their followers. And they will even put a link back to your website so that you, A, you are attributed for that content, you are attributed as the expert, you are published on somebody else's platform, great for credibility, and not to mention, you now are in a position to collect the leads and the followers from that person's platform. So one of the ways that I find people to write for is you simply go to Google, you type in the keyword of the types of blogs and magazines that you're looking to write for, and then in square brackets, put write for us. So for instance, if I wanted to present uh, or write for entrepreneur magazines, for magazines that entrepreneurs read, because I target entrepreneurs and business owners, I would go to Google and I type in entrepreneur, square brackets, write for us. And when I hit search, what that will do is bring up all of the blogs, all of the magazines, everybody who accepts guest articles. Well, guess what? I create a massive Google sheet, which I have just grown and grown and grown and grown over the years. I add the submission details. So some people you submit your article by a form on their website. Uh, others of them, you just simply send an email out and you have to email it in a certain way. Some of them have strict rules about how long the article needs to be, whether or not you include images, things like that. But I create this big Google sheet. I collect all of these target magazines and blogs that accept guest articles. And so every time I do a video and I transcribe it and then I turn it into a blog post, what do I do? I email it out to all of those people to see if I have the opportunity for it to be published on their site as well. Many don't get back many do get back, some get published. So it really is worth it. Um, it's a fantastic way for you to massively grow your following, grow your list. And of course, again, continue to as an expert online. Okay, number 10 is now after a period of time, you will hopefully have published a number of videos. The more prolific, the more omnipresent you are being, the more you turn up, show up, get seen, get heard, the more you are establishing yourself as an expert online. So what you wanna do quite simply is after a while, you should have been following the same process, do the video, do the live stream, save it as an MP4, upload the videos, get the transcript, create the blog post. Now from that blog post, over a period of time, you will have lots of blog posts. And from those lots of blog posts, all you're gonna do is copy and paste them all into one big document, give it an edit, give it a tidy up, save it as a PDF file, go to amazonkdp.com, upload it, press publish, you're a published author. Uh, that sounds very simple. And of course, it's a slightly simplified version of the process of publishing. But having published 12 books, five of which have gone to international number one bestseller, I can assure you it is nowhere near as hard as people think to publish a book and to get that published on Amazon. And when I say you take your transcript, you take all your content, you copy and paste it into a Word document, you tidy up, save it as a PDF, and you press upload to Amazon, really that is the crux of it. The more complicated bit is getting the, you know, getting someone to get, design your cover in the way that you want it. It's all aesthetics, you know, how long does it take for you to get the perfect cover designed? Um, it, but the actual process itself is really, really simple. And the second you press publish on Amazon, boom, you're a published author. You are a published author. Now, uh, there is nothing that quite says expert more than being a published author. And if people go and type your name into Google and you have a book that comes up in the search results on, on Google, well, I mean, straight away, there's credibility assured right there. And it amazed me the second I published my first book. Um, my uh, applications to speak on people's podcasts, to speak on stages, to speak at conferences, suddenly went through the roof. It was as if that um, publishing of that book automatically established my credibility and reassured people that I was who I said I was and reassured people that working with me was a great decision. So I really can't recommend this enough. All this started with was sharing some live stream videos, getting those transcripts, 
and then tidying them up. It's about simply having the discipline to spend the time and do these things. It, there is no magic gift to becoming successful in your field. You do not need money. You do not need investors. You do not need some special magical miracle to happen to you. You do not need to win the lottery. You do not need anyone supporting you. You simply need discipline. If you care enough about where you're going and what you're doing, you care enough to simply show up each day, that is all you need to succeed. Honestly, that is exactly all I've done. That's exactly all the people who uh, are other successful people have done as well. So it's amazing what can happen. Now, number 11 is to then do keynote presentations, go on to summits, go and do these big live, um, these big live online summits that are happening right now. So if you've got some content out there, People are going to see that you are serious about your topic, that you have a viewpoint, that you have strategies, that you have educational content to share. Well, guess what? This is when people are going to start reaching out to you and saying, hey, I know that you're an expert in this thing because I keep seeing you everywhere. You know, I've seen your stuff. I've been following you for a while. Will you come onto my show? Will you come to my conference and speak for us? Will you come onto my online summit and be a presenter? Will you come into my Facebook group and co-present a live stream to my audience? want to come on my podcast so I can interview you <laughs> hell yes you do absolutely you do but this stage only happens after you've created all of this other stuff after you've been showing up and it is again amazing that after a while of creating of speaking of presenting your topic through live streams you only have to do this from your phone guys in your spare room I'm not talking about Hollywood productions or film crews here I'm talking about mobile phones all you've got to do is get on that phone and go live and all this stuff is possible. Uh, so uh, we, what happens through this process of just continuing to say your thing in your own way is that your articulation of that perfects over time. It just flows out of you more naturally. You find your special unique system for, you find your sort of special 10 steps for something. And once you have your special system for something, which only comes naturally as a part of continuously saying it and evolving it and iterating it, each time you say it, this is when you really truly are seen as the expert. This is when you are the standout person with the standout system, the standout formula for X in your topic. That is when you have made it in your space because that's when you have something unique to sell and give out. Now, step, step number 12 is, I've talked about this a number of times, but a step on its own right is to go onto people's podcasts or create one of your own. Now, as I've mentioned, it's really, really straightforward to create your own podcasts. But if it's not, if you're not up for that, if you're not up for doing that yourself, get on other people's. There are millions of podcasts that are looking for people to interview every single day. Again, simply just go onto Google. Google, type in the top 100 podcasts in, and then whatever your topic is of where the the listeners are that you're trying to target, reach out to the podcast host and say, hi, my name is, I'm an expert in the following. Here's something I would love to share with your audience. Make sure you give a title for the podcast, three things that you will share that will be highly educational and engaging for the audience. And here's how to contact me. You, know, you don't ever, ever, ever sit back and wait to be interviewed on these things. Don't wait for somebody to give you a throne. Don't wait for somebody to throw you the winner's badge. You, know, you are the only person that can do this. If you want to be successful, you have to go out and get it yourself. If you want people to blow your trumpet for you, you have to start blowing it first, okay? You, you, people are not, they, other people weren't born or don't exist to help you be successful. The only way you will be seen as a leader, as an expert, is if you are in front of people, if you're being omnipresent and you are constantly giving valuable content that people want to keep following. To be a leader, you have to have followers. And the only way to get people to follow you is to be worth following. And the only time you're worth following is this because you have something that people need, people want, and people want more of all of the time. People who depend on your consistency of showing up and the, the, the passion and the confidence and the validity and the relevance and the topicness of your things that you share. So you've gotta be there, you've gotta turn up, you've gotta get online. 
Now, I have a free course creation starter kit. It doesn't matter whether you attend to be an educator or not. If you are going out to share with the world, if you're giving information, if you're creating content, you are educating. So I have a completely free of charge course creation starter kit, which will take you through how to come up with your idea, how to come up with your thing, how to come up with your ideas and the content that you're going to share, how to present it to the world, what tech you will need, and a little bit of motivational help to get you through imposter syndrome as well is in there with some other extra bonuses. So what you're going to do is go to sarahcordonat.com forward slash starter kit to grab yourself that free starter kit. Um, there are over 11 tutorial videos, free workbooks, quizzes, all kinds of delightful, delicious things in there as well. So I am going to go back to our big screen here. I'm going to um, just see if there are any questions coming up in the questions. Karen says, is this recorded? Yes, it is, my lovely. It's absolutely recorded. Um, but you are one of my concept to course people. So those people who are in my concept to course program um, starts on the 1st of May. If you're listening to this after this recording, go to sarahcordon.com forward slash do it if you want to check out when our next program is. But Karen, yes, there is a proper tutorial version of this inside your course area. But this recording would definitely be available too. Uh, any more questions? Doesn't look like we do. If you have any more questions for me at all on any of these topics, please pop them below and I will get back to you after I have um, had a little break. I will definitely go through the comments there regularly and check in. But just remember, you can't help anyone when you're hiding under your doona. You can't help anybody when you're worrying about what people are going to think about you. You can't help anybody if you're not sharing your content. If people don't want it, if they don't want to follow it, they're going to unfollow you. That's fine. They're not there for you. That They're not your people. Your, your point is you, know, you have to be out there to help somebody and you could be changing somebody's life. You could be saving somebody's life with what you have to share, with what you know, with what you have to give. So please do not hold back. Now, if you want to make your words prolific omnipresence like mine are, use those words, put them up on your screen, prolific omnipresence. You can't help anyone if it's not out there. So keep sharing, keep giving, keep edupreneuring, be brave, have confidence, go out there and lead because people need you. And don't forget, you can follow me at sarahcordner.com. Grab your starter kit at sarahcordner.com forward slash starter kit. That's completely free of charge to help you get out there, educate your market and become a leader and an expert in your field. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in another episode. See you soon.